Welcome to Heart Power Conversations. This episode is a solo episode, and the focus is on New Earth quantum business structures. You may know me as the human behind the Heart Power Living, and I'll give you a very quick overview if this is your first episode, your first uh, video if you're watching on YouTube. Heart Power Living is the company that I started in 2020. And the whole purpose behind Heart Power Living is guiding spiritual seekers, guiding women to live from the heart, ending the loop of seeking and healing and trying to figure things out and truly living from the from that seeking and not being enough into moving into the heart, into the presence that we all have available to us, the heart consciousness way. And the focus of it is intentional living, mindful, intuitive, creative, conscious, as a vehicle, as a channel for the divine love, wisdom, will, the threefold flame of the heart. The, the whole journey of the heart is us becoming more and more of this embodiment, of this avatar of our soul. And this really is the new earth way of operating, the new paradigm. It's where we are all shifting into the unity heart consciousness. But this is not all that there is to my work. I, my own personal background is first having a career in the corporate world, in marketing, in advertising, in tech, in business development, in all things marketing, strategy, and project management. I left that world 14 years ago to start a business, and then another, and then another. And I've had failures, I've had incredible successes where within six months of starting my business, my products were on the Today Show and in magazines and being recognized on the streets with people wearing them. And I've learned a lot on my journey as an entrepreneur. I've burned out. I almost lost my health and possibly even my life to, to the grind, to this old way of operating as a business owner. And the summer of 2023, I had a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with Spirit where I said, there's got to be another way. There are so many of us that are feeling like we are here to be entrepreneurs. We're here to be business owners. Show me how. Show me how, and I will do it, and I will teach others how to do it. And just about a couple weeks later came the Pyramid Codes. In September 2023, right before a three-week-long pilgrimage to Egypt that I, that I embarked on, and the Pyramid Codes came to help spiritual entrepreneurs build their soul mission, soul-led businesses for the new earth, era of freedom, peace, abundance, and love for all. And I know we throw these words around and it's, it's all feel-good things, but this truly came as a spirit wanting to highlight, highlight that you did come to experience freedom. You all did. You all came to experience abundance and remember that abundance is who you are. And the Pyramid Code's teachings came as a cross between what you may be familiar with as a mystery school curriculum that included earth magic, apprenticing with the elements, earth, fire, air, water, spirit guides that are very present in your business, the powerful devas and councils that are here to help you birth whatever you are here to deliver into the physical, and powerful energetic practices that are encoded with sacred geometry and shapes and invocations and really using the power that we have as these energetic beings that we are. 
So there's that piece. And then there's the modern business mastery school that is filled with practical tools and systems that give you a foundation to build a successful spiritual mission-based business. And this comes from my lifetime of being an entrepreneur for 14 years, having a background in marketing, advertising, strategy, all things. The Pyramid Codes came as a blueprint for building a new earth mission-based business. It came as a way for us to reframe the way that we see a business and also reframe the relationship that we have with our businesses. And I work with others, with women on this through one-on-one -on -one work, through 12 month long container and shorter, shorter things like workshops and smaller events. Above all else, what we are here to remember is that our businesses are these healing pyramid temples. And it doesn't mean you have to be a healer to, you, to be this, to see it this way. You can be a photographer that helps bring out the, the true essence through images for families. You can be a chef. You can be a meditation teacher or yoga teacher or a creative. Whatever it is, it is still a temple. It is your temple. And you are the temple keeper, the flame keeper of your pyramid. And why pyramid? We're familiar with the pyramids of Giza and pyramids in South America and Bosnia. And you may have heard about, about these structures all around the world. Well, here's the interesting thing that I was told when this first started dropping, dropping in, downloading into me. The pyramid is encoded with really powerful energetics, sacred geometry. And it's been encoded from way before Earth was even an idea. And it's not just about the top of the pyramid. It's also about the bottom part. There's a second part below the pyramid that we see above ground. And in our cases, our pyramid temple has a top and there's a bottom. And it's the unseen world. And it's what powers it from below. And in the case of the physical pyramids, it's the energetics that are coming from below, the, the elements, the elementals, the earth energies, the outside uh, help that we are receiving from our galactic brothers and sisters that are coming in, empowering the pyramid. That was the first thing that was, that was given. And you could see it in the, the image with the, the blue and the pink light, this octahedron shape. And what was also shared was that this particular shape is conducive to creation. And they would always say, think of it as an egg. Think of it as a creation egg. It creates this capsule within which we can create freely. And by create, they mean channel consciousness in and then birth it out into the physical. And we'll talk about that in a second. The second piece of it, the most important part of it all, is that this pyramid temple that you are building, your business temple, is part of the network. And this net exists on the earth, and it also exists above earth as an overlay, as an energetic overlay that is plugging all of us into it. Us here the with our pyramid temples, the physical structures that are encoded with so much power that are holding transmissions and energetics for millennia, and also the energetics that exist above us in this dome that is being constantly fed with more energy. So as you are thinking of starting or if you are running your spiritual business already, remember that there is this net overlay that exists 
that you get to plug into and that you get to receive reinforcement from and that you can use to connect to others and you can use it to magnify your message and it's it's here to assist us because we are we are bringing through what is most needed on the planet right now old versus new structures what are the key differences when it comes to old versus new earth um, quantum business structures the first thing that I was asked to share about this is your work is your sole mission service. You came here with unique gifts. You came here remembering past masteries. And this is how your soul came here to express itself. And it might be that you're a really talented writer, or it might be that you are a talented speaker, you're a convincing peacemaker. And it doesn't mean that you're here to be a, a monk or a priest speaking words of peace in that way. It may be that you're an attorney that, that helps usher peace into difficult situations through mediation or whatever it is. But this is ultimately the way for us to see and to connect to our work as not just work that we're here to do for our survival, but this is part of my soul mission and how my soul expresses itself. And it is also how love and creation are made manifest in the physical through me. And the second that we can flip this script on our work and see it through this lens, something shifts. So the way that in the old model, in the matrix, the flow of abundance and the financial exchange happens and how we think about it is I give you a service, I deliver a service or a product, and you give me money, and that's the exchange. In the new model, in this new net that we are plugging into, we are also plugging into the universe as a whole more fully. When we, from our heart, deliver this work, these words, this creation, these solutions, these services, whatever it is that are truly our heart's greatest desire and greatest service for, for our clients, for humanity as a whole, and we're bringing it forth, this energy comes from our heart in a figure eight goes out into the world. And in return, it comes back to us, yes, through an individual, but it comes back to us as the universe feeding the energy back to us, feeding this energy loop that is the figure eight going out of our heart and then into the world and then coming back at us. And this is true for love. This is true for financial abundance. This is true for, for anything. As soon as we plug into this universal net, we are making a decision to live in the flow of the universe, in the flow of abundance. The next thing I would like to discuss is, and if you are, if you are listening to this and not watching on YouTube, I'm going to do my best to describe this visual. If you can imagine your pyramid, the square base of the pyramid, and your dot in the middle, and you're all alone. And around your pyramid, there's a circle and there's like a circle drawn in the sand. I'm alone. I'm a lone business, a solopreneur, whatever, whatever that word is. Well, what the new business structures are here to teach us is that you're never alone, actually. And there is an invitation always to cooperate and to network. Immediately next to you appears another pyramid with a square base and a dot there in the middle and a circle around it. And your circle overlays with their circle, forming a Vesica Pisces to where the circle passes, your circle passes through the center of the, the other circle. It forms a Vesica Pisces 
This is the model of cooperation and co-creation. And the next step of it is to see that it's not just two dots in, in their pyramid temples with circles around them. It's actually a whole flower of life pattern with many, many, many dots and many pyramid temples and many circles around them that overlap to form the lattice shape of the, the flower of life. And what we are doing here is we are weaving this network of light, this overlay that is that exists over the planet that all of the businesses are plugging into is the shape and form and the visual of the flower of life. It is this beautiful network that we are that we are building, that we are co-creating. And all of it is in defense of life. All of it is stands for life. And that's the businesses that get to plug into it and that get to feed and grow and exponentially explode this network with light. So this is all great, but how does one become successful with this? Well, we talked a lot about the energetics of it, the quantum work, the connection, the channeling, our soul frequency, the all the things. And by the way, we can all do this. You don't have to be an energy healer or medium or everyone can do these basic visualization and connection techniques. But energetics is one. If you can imagine a triangle, at the top of it is the energetics with this quantum work and all of that. In the bottom right corner is execution. You're still in the physical. You still have habits and behavior and time management and prioritization and strategy and you have to take effective aligned action. We're still here in the physical getting things done. And then in the other corner, in the third corner of the triangle is mindset. And our thoughts manifest our reality. We create from the limiting beliefs, from the ego programs and from the loops that we get stuck in that keep creating the outcomes that are not exactly desirable. And we all have them. The work really comes down to energetics, mindset, and execution. And there is probably enough material for me to speak for 10 days straight, if not longer, about all things the Pyramid Codes. But I really wanted to bring, to bring forward these 10 key principles. The first is that as the flame keeper of your temple, the invitation and the big request really from the universe is for you to come into homeostasis within yourself, within your inner temple of your body. And we have to look at the whole of ourselves when starting or running businesses. We have to look at our love life, at our partners are they supportive or are they not at our families and how is that affecting us at our communities at our inner worlds that might still be a little muddy it's all connected and the invitation is to bring all of that into balance or change the relationship with it so that we can feel at peace with it not to mention your nervous system and what is happening to you as you are navigating this journey. So can you make your own physical, emotional, energetic health a priority? Can you make rest a priority? And my guides always say, you're no use to us in a state of burnout or when you're playing martyr or sacrificing yourself for this work. No, that's not what you're here to do. 
The second piece of the puzzle is the heart. The heart is the igniter, if you will, of the flame in the pyramid temple. You need to run the business from the heart, not the ego. Making decisions based on love, highest timeline, desires, following inspiration, following that spark that is coming through, positive feeling and not fear, lack, scarcity and what someone else is doing. Can you become intimately involved with your ego and know all of its narratives and choose to operate in a different way? Choose to change the sequencing so that a new reality can emerge. What conditioning do you revert to? What tendencies do you have? Where you tend to move into autopilot or numbing? And this is where, again, the invitation is to engage in mindset work, neural pathway reprogramming, expanding your nervous system to to be comfortable with, with the idea of being a business owner because so many of us are not and it is part of the physical world. So we do have to expand to, in order to step into it. So what runs your subconscious runs your life and it will run your business. And I know that's not how any of us want to run our businesses. So return to the heart, to the higher consciousness that is available to you at all time. And ultimately, this also means that it will be supported. The project, the business as a whole will be supported because your heart is plugged into the universal highways. It's plugged into source. Number three is the why. Do you know your why? Are you intimately connected to the why behind your business, behind doing this work, your reason for being, for doing this? What is the connection to something beyond you? The highest good for all, for earth. And this is crucial because as you plug into the, the net, this energetic network of other pyramids and earth structures and the outside uh, help that is coming in, the invitation is to have a vision for the highest good of all. So for you personally, what does that mean? Many solutions are being birthed in devotion to Gaia, our beloved home, in devotion for humanity as a whole. Your intention is everything here. For example, a collective example can be shift the consciousness on the planet to be part of this evolutionary leap of this ascension that we're going through. And then what is your personal why? For example, I want to play. I want to express myself. I want to know true freedom, to travel, to build communities, to have these wild, enriching and expansive experiences with my children and my family. Remember, your business is a pyramid temple. Everyone who enters into it is your soul family. They come to interact with you maybe just once and have something shifted. Many have soul contracts that are for you to be their guide for a longer time. If you can imagine them coming into your pyramid and remembering your why and not seeing anyone as a means for receiving financial abundance, but truly as a soul having their experience and you being a guide or being a helper or being a facilitator or whatever it is that you are that you are there to assist with and you're walking them up the spiral staircase of your business. So what is the why for the journey of the client? What is the why for this whole staircase that you're walking up on? And if anything that you take out of this, remember that you are a tuning fork. You and everything that you are, the frequency that you embody, your why for being is tuning them to 
their own reason why, attuning them to their own embodiment. They're taking in the codes and plugging them into their system. Higher consciousness is number four. You are not alone. You have a team of guides, a team of higher consciousness beings that are assisting in bringing all of this through. Every project, every idea comes as a consciousness. This is a huge reframe that we are being asked to navigate. Think of it as a overlay that exists over Earth, like a cloud. And it comes to you, this idea, this spark. Maybe it's a drop. And it comes to you, and at the same time, the same idea might come to one, two, maybe 12 other people. And it's coming to you now because the collective needs it. And this is similar to Thomas Edison and somebody else at the same time working on a light bulb. Because the time was right. The stage in our consciousness evolution journey is right. And this is why you may be receiving this specific meditation, for example, a dragon meditation at the same time as somebody else, because the consciousness that is coming through, the changes that are coming through on the planet are supportive of this, are needed at this time. So begin seeing the world of creation as such, where you are a channel and a vessel for bringing through whatever is coming through. And you're plugged into this network from which more and more is dripping in. But what you say yes to is your choice. How do you know that this is for you? And the more open you become, the more is gonna keep coming. So how do you know that this is for you? And our tendency can often be well, this is mine. I have, to, I have to bring this through. I thought about this. This is mine. No, here's where the switch comes. How does your body respond to this? Are you so on fire that you can't even imagine not birthing this idea, not bringing this project through? Maybe it's a healing modality. Maybe it's a necklace or a painting. Maybe it's a new way of doing something. And you just feel you have to be involved in this in some, some way. Like this is, this feels so on fire. And we're being asked to drop the struggle of how some projects are. Just these pushing rocks, giant boulders up the hill. And see that there is a way for effortless creation to birth things with more ease and with more flow and support. And this is where it's really important to create a strong practice of invoking the energetic template blueprint of the business. And we can engage with the energetics of the unseen world through altars, energy blessings, invocations, through the guided experiences of seeing seeing the blueprints come to life as well as in our own daily practice of connecting to the sacred geometry within and without within us and around us number five is the network and i say net and work in parenthesis almost as one word the net work Beyond your team, there's a whole network that exists. It's not just your one deva. It is so much bigger than that. And everyone who is joining into this, into this new business paradigm, is plugging into it, consciously or not. And this network is, is almost like a pyramid structure framework that exists above us. If you can imagine tiny glowing pyramids as an overlay over earth that are all lit up like satellites just covering and hovering over earth, this is what we are 
plugging into. And there is a lot more to the sacred geometry that I won't go into today, but the the whole pyramid and octahedron is connected to the stellated octahedron, which is a Merkaba, and so many, so many nuances and and deeper spiritual and energetic meanings behind all of it. So as we consciously plug into it and plug some of the sacred sites into it, and this is the work that many of us are engaging in, where we are consciously connecting the sides and the, their fields to the network, to this greater grid that exists, the force of the whole thing is magnified. And we are here to evolve and train ourselves in imagining seeing beyond the veil. And there is an architecture with energy relaying back and forth. The grid is constantly activated and constantly expanding and growing. Our pyramids are connected above and below. I know I mentioned the octahedron. If you can imagine that it's not just an isolated object. Your business is not just a separate inner circle isolated from everything else. It is connected to the net below the ground. So if you can imagine through your pyramid temple runs a spiral. It runs through the earth and connects you to the core of Gaia to the crystalline grids, to her waters, to her fiery magma, to all, all that is. You are plugged into her. You are plugged into her body and her consciousness. And above, the spiral goes through you and through the center of your pyramid temple. And it goes shooting out towards the sun and through our sun towards central sun and source and connects as it travels up, it connects and sends the signal out in and connects into the whole network, that overlay, that energetic overlay. Number six is speaking of stars and solar systems, the constellations is how we're being asked to approach networking from now on. Collaboration, co-creation, what does that look like for you? We're being asked to grow this network and to network as humans. And a lot of us feel so uncomfortable with that. Yet we're being asked to bring soul tribes together. We are being asked to connect. How do you know who to work with? What is in alignment? This is where our practice of discernment comes in. How does it feel in your body? Is it in alignment with my why? How does this person feel? What is their energy? What can we co-create together? Will our energies mesh well together? Can our pyramids be in each other's field and create magic together? And can you see this tentacle of lights when your pyramid and you have these tentacles of light like an octopus expanding out from you and they have theirs. Are they a match? Do they plug in like Velcro? Are they a match to plug in with each other? And we are creating new models that will become the default, the new industry standards. And we are also downloading or uploading rather these codes into the Akash, into the Akashic records of the earth, creating the hundredth monkey effect, this new framework that we are creating, this new way of operating, the way of relating to one another, where it's cooperation and co-creation and collaboration over competition. We are creating a new memory, a new default way of operating. So others can plug into it and be it, receive it without necessarily seeing and learning from us directly. It's as if we're feeding the collective consciousness field 
from which others will learn and receive this and want to shift as well. Number seven is creation. So creation in new earth business structures is a co-creative process. I've already talked about how it all comes in, funnels through the pyramid, funnels through you. Well, gone are the days of this is my idea. Again, you are the vehicle for creation. You are a creation portal. And for women, especially the who have physical wombs, I'm constantly being shown that the wombs carry these sparks of creation that are not just children as life, as souls that are here to come to be, but these creative ideas that are these words that are waiting to be spoken, these songs, whatever, whatever it is. And when we connect the womb to the heart, to the throat, true magic unlocks. And creation comes from a new place, from source. Again, remember this spiral that runs through your pyramid temple, runs through you, through your heart. The flame of your heart plugs into it and fuels it, ignites it. And it runs all the way up and connects to source. And yes, you are running the energy up, but most of the energy is coming down and feeding you. It is fueling you. We're being asked to step into our roles as creator beings, to remember that we are creator beings and living with a knowing that there is so much power in that and learning to embody that power. One of the primary guides of the pyramid codes is Maat, a creator being in Elohim. She teaches us how to work with the elements, water, air, fire, earth, and how to harness the energy within and of the elements and to co-create within the energetic container of the pyramid and of the octahedron. And many of us, we can understand it conceptually. Oh, we can, I can see it and read it and understand it. But the invitation here is to incorporate it into your creation process to truly become one with these elements. And this goes beyond the masculine and the feminine. This is the foundation of how our physical reality is created. And it is using our body, using our breath, understanding the gifts that the elements carry and how we can use them. Execution is number eight. We're getting, thank you for bearing with me. We're getting close to the end. So remember the triangle, energetics, mindset, execution. We are still in the physical and aligned action is required. We're still being asked to have structures and systems in place. We're still being asked to become accountants of our time and energy more than ever before being asked to protect our sacred time that we spend on this work and to use our time wisely to build and rest into all of it and the earth element that symbolizes structures and systems is needed here and a lot of us multi-passionate entrepreneurs creatives the earth element is missing in a lot of our daily life. We try to hide and run away from it, but earth element is what brings things into completion. It is what finalizes and packages the creation and puts it out into the world. The next thing I want to discuss is, can you find and honor your inner rhythms? Can you Look at your life through the lens of, am I affected by somebody else's rhythms? Maybe my partner, my work, if you have a job, my kids. Is there a rhythm I'm being asked to follow? If you can imagine your life as a dance, is there a beat that is running? in the background that I'm being asked to compose my song to. 
or am I completely free? And then I really have to pay attention to my rhythm, my inner rhythm and my inspiration and how things come in to use my energy wisely. And what are the seasons of your life? Do you follow the calendar, astral movements, the planets, the stars, the moon? Or do you truly walk to the beat of your own drum? Do you create your own seasons and blocks in your year? Again, do you follow the school calendar? What are you, what do you have to play with here? Can you master the flow state and learn to stretch time? Is one of the greatest teachings of the pyramid codes is that we can stretch time, that we can, by engaging with a spiral of creation, by becoming one with the energy that we're channeling, with this creation that we're bringing through, we can stretch time. And lastly, in execution, I'd like to say, ask yourself every day, how can this be simpler? How can this be simpler? There's got to be a simpler way. Show me. What is a simpler way of doing this? Number nine is legacy. We all come with different personal blueprints. Some of our souls simply came to play, just to be, to know love, to know oneness. And then there were those who came to be these commander souls. And it's as if we're here to leave a, a true print, a soul print, a heart print behind. And we feel it. And sometimes it comes with a lot of responsibility. We came here to assist in something greater than us. And it feels like the soul truly came to lay a foundation for this legacy, to leave this legacy behind. And, and also came here to be an instrument for channeling more of the money through because many of the businesses we're talking about here can be built to funnel more money to funnel more energy through so that money can switch hands it can move move through these businesses and be directed to where it needs to go and the question here is always how will it be used for good what is the intention for this money to where does it want to go what impact does it want to create money is fluid it's an energy so how are you going to build a foundation and what are you going to create for this flow of money to keep moving through your business and out into the world to create impact and have a lasting effect on others. Intention is 10. It always, always, always comes back to your intention. My guides say your intentions move you forward. Are you dreaming? Dreams give the universe a blueprint to assist in moving the invisible blocks that create our reality. What is your vision for new earth? What are some of the solutions, technologies, ideas that are coming to you when you connect to it? Your higher self is constantly feeding you dreams, inspiration, visions through your heart. Your higher self is showing you what is possible, possible highest timelines. When you really plug into it, you begin to see more of it. You begin to see all of it at once. And your job is to look at it and say, I can't say no to this. This is a full body yes. This is a yes. And it fits in my pyramid and it ignites my pyramid even more. Remember, you are plugged into source. You are plugged into something greater than the earthly matrix system that we've been a part of. And lastly, some of the key takeaways to summarize this for you. Your pyramid temple holds a powerful energetic blueprint template based on sacred geometry, which is the foundation of all, all of life, everything. You're here to birth new technologies, solutions, songs, new consciousness. You're here as a vessel for them. 
you have a guide. You have a whole council of light supporting you in this journey. You're not alone. Your clients are your soul family that are being magnetized by the field of your pyramid temple and the climb up the pyramid spiral staircase with you. Your invitation is to become one with the creation spiral, to really remember that you are a creator being and to learn to use them so that life can be more easeful. And you're plugged into the net instead of the matrix. And that really changes everything the second that we realize that there's something else available there. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for taking some of these codes in. If you are interested in learning more, find me at the dot pyramid dot codes on Instagram or just the pyramid codes.com. Heart Powered Living is my primary business and through which I guide the spiritual seekers to live from the heart. The Pyramid Codes focuses primarily on the business aspect that we that we just talked about. So thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. And the last thing I'd like to say is if you would like to experience the power of the collective coming together, join me every Sunday. We do New Earth Heart Circles where we bring collective together and travel up the spiral to New Earth. If that is appealing, it's free. We do them every Sunday. And the second thing, the free gift that is linked in show notes that is linked below is the meditation to invoke your pyramid temple, the template that is the energetic blueprint of your business and to call in the guide so that you can experience the energy within the container and so that you can create a space where you communicate with them regularly.